hello and welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be a little different we're going to be using adobe fresco and adobe illustrator to create seamless patterns so i'll be using adobe fresco to actually paint or draw my illustrations and then we're going to transfer it to illustrator to make it into a seamless pattern so i guess let's just do that but before that let me just begin screen recording so that i can show you properly how things are done in a better way okay first let me just take my pencil, click on Adobe Fresco. So I'm going to create a size five into five inches. If you don't have it, click on custom create. And in custom create, we're going to select inches. And then here, make sure this lock is set to unlock. And then we can make it as five. And here is five again. And then here in PPI, we're going to make it 300 so background is can be white or it can also be transparent so we'll set it to transparent because then it'll reduce one step of deleting the background in illustrator and you can save this size by clicking on this button but i've already saved it so i'm going to uncheck this and click on create document okay so our first let's leave this as blank and i'm just going to go ahead and click on this button to create a new layer I know we'll be transferring it to Illustrator, so it would be better if you work with Vector because Illustrator is a vector-based uh, program. But since I love the oil brush so much, although it won't show up exactly like that in Illustrator, but I'm going to use that because I just love painting with it. So click on this brush here and then click on oil. And here you have so many options that you can take. And I'll probably take oil paint round. Uh, let me just check that. Or no, I'm going to take oil paint chunky. Yes, this is something nice. And if you double click it, like if you use two fingers and click on it, it automatically deletes or, or it's a gesture for undo. So you can do that. Now here is a color. So I'm going to click on this and I'll bring this all the way up here so that we get the most bright color of whatever we are choosing right here. So we can choose many colors like this. And then over here is the opacity. So you can just drag up and down. So all you do is click and drag up and down. So I'm just going to make sure this is set to completely up. That is flow is 100. So it's very opaque like this. And you see how nice it flows. The brush is just beautiful. So I'm just going to undo that. And now let's go ahead and do our basic design. So I'm just going to draw some Christmas related themes because because that's what we are going to be making pattern of. So one thing that you have to know is each element that you draw should be on a separate layer. Otherwise you won't be able to arrange them nicely when it comes to when you're trying to create a pattern. So let's go ahead and make some simple things. I'll start off with gifts. Let me have a, just take a red and I'll just, I think I need to reduce the size here. It's 326. So I'll just drag it down and let's just check. This should be fine. So let's just draw a something which is a cube kind of thing. You can see that I'm not making like extremely detailed or very fancy artwork because I'm not aiming for that. Now let's just change this to move this so that it goes to yellow. And if you work on this same layer, you see that it gets blended. So I'm ju just going to undo that. Now I'll click on separate layer. I don't know what that is, but it looks like a gift, I guess. Okay, so our first element is ready, but now it's time to merge this down. So click on this and then you have an option where it says merge down and you can just click on that. Now click on this plus sign again. We are on a separate layer and let me just make a yellow present. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a yellow present. And for this one, let's go ahead and change this to black. So I'm just going to drag it all the way down and then, oops, new layer. Okay, so your second gift is ready. So click on this and merge down. So let's draw a Christmas tree now. Go to your brush all the way here and let's take some green. Obviously, if you go here, you have all these really light green. So I'm just going to move down so that you have a little bit of a dark green. 
and then we need a brown I think I should have put a brown first so I'm just going to undo that and I'll just go ahead and put it somewhere here let's just go towards red I'm sorry take this circle and move towards red and if you scroll down you'll get some brown okay that seems fine and now let's go ahead and go to green merge this down I'm going to go and take some yellow like this and then let's reduce the size a little bit I'm going to go ahead and shift a bit to red and then we can go ahead and go to black reduce this all the way down and then let me zoom in here and then it's something like this I didn't choose a different layer and one thing you should know because it picked up orange it's going to continue with that so this paint mix here if you click on this there's an option called as a reload color if you click on that so now even if I do it will come back to black even if I mix this and do this it will come back to black so if you don't do reload color it will just pick up whatever color you had previously let me go back to yellow or red and then you know okay our Christmas tree is also ready and now some leaves so let me go ahead and uh, go back down here and let's go to green and in here let's draw some okay this is too thin so I'm going to increase this So this, I drew it on the same layer. I'll have to undo this. And also I see a rogue stroke here. So I'm just going to try and erase this off. Okay, now here I'll just click and say merge down. Okay, and then click again. And in this layer, we're going to go ahead and let me just make sure. Okay, there was an extra stroke. So one thing you can see that there's some extra stroke. The object was on the left or the right so that meant there was some extra stroke on the right side so I erased it and now the object is centered so that's how you know there are some rogue strokes around so you can avoid it let's go to the new layer and we have already chosen our color so I'm just going to go to my brush and then draw this so I'll click on one more and I'm just going to go ahead and darken it a little bit Reduce the size a little bit and then make a stroke like this. Okay, let me just delete this one here. Don't want it. Now merge down. Now there's definitely something in here which is like making this leaf go on the top. I think it's some um, thing right here. So I'm going to click on eraser. And make sure it's the biggest size. And erase that part so that it comes to the center. And now we are going to make one more leaf, a little lighter in color probably. Okay, and let's take it a little darker, reduce the size. Okay, now it's time to make some simple elements like dots and circles and stuff like that. We can keep this green. So we're gonna make some of these in different colors on different layers. Now we'll make also stars or twinkling stars like this. And then I think I might want to make a sock. Click on this button here and then slowly drag it and keep it here so that there's some space. So now we have enough space to create this sock. So it's simple, you have red. I'll just go and click on the layer that I want and I'm going to make a J. Just going to erase this part and do that again. It definitely should not be pointed, but. Okay, so let's click on new layer and let's select some white or at least close to white um, because that's um, what we need and reduce the line and then make some designs here all 
All right. And the next thing we can do is now let's go ahead and merge this down. This should be fine. And you can make more elements like this. So you need not stop at this. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go to my, I don't know, green probably. And make a... Okay, so all our layers and elements are ready and now it's time to export it. So there are two different ways you can export it. One is you can go to export, publish and export. And you can select export as. And here, instead of PNG, make sure you select PSD. And then you can click on export. So this will pop up. And one thing you can do is you can save it to files and email it or you can just email it. I use AirDrop because uh, I have a Mac, so it's much more convenient for me. So I'm just going to click on AirDrop and send it to my Mac. Apparently, the file is in my Mac now. So next up, uh, we'll go open the file and I'll show you how to proceed with that. So now that we have transferred the file onto a Mac or on your system, let's go ahead and open it in Illustrator. So for that, find your PSD file, right click open with and open it with illustrator so you see this window where you can actually select different options so first one is convert layers to objects so what this does is every layer which has an artwork gets converted into an object and this is exactly what we need and if you have any hidden layers make sure to check this box as well and click ok now if you go to layers that is window and then layers you will see all the different layers that is different artworks that we have and now let me just click and select everything and drag it a bit here to see if there's any background. Once I've made sure that there is no background, now I'm going to convert it into a pattern. So click and select everything. Let's go to object, pattern, make. Click OK. So if you haven't seen any of my seamless pattern videos, then I will tell you a bit about this thing that we have right here. So the blue box that you see contains all our artwork that we have created and everything else here is a projected image to show us how it would look as a pattern. So I'm not happy with how these things are arranged. So I'm just going to go ahead and move stuff around a little bit so that um, it looks a little different. So there are many options to choose from. So we could do grid by row, column, grid, hex, etc, etc. So what we could do is I'll show you how to work with hex in this case. So I chose hex by column and you can see that there are a lot of overlapping. So we're going to fix that first. So go ahead and click on this button right here, which says pattern tile tool. And when you click on that, so automatically you get these options. So now you can actually move this a bit in all directions, in fact, but I think this should be fine. So I'll adjust it so that it looks something like this. And now I'll move the things around. So this should look fine. So let's move things around to make it look much better than what it looks like right now. Okay. And I'm going to go and click on this again. So I'm out of it. So let's put this sock somewhere here and the gift somewhere here. It's close to the red one. So I'll have to change that. Okay. This place looks like a very good place for the gift. So I'm going to put that there and I'll drag the tree here. Let me put this here. So it looks all messy right now, but don't worry. We're going to adjust that. And let's create one more of this sock. So hold your Option or Alt key down, click and drag, and it will make a copy. Now hold your Shift key down and drag it in to make a tiny little sock, which we're going to place it here. Okay, let's just look at this. There's a bit of space here, so I'm just going to move this a little bit like that. Do you like the way this has turned out? You just make sure that step back a little and take a look at how everything looks together. And if you feel like you can add a few more things, sometimes you can't move these things over here. That's because this is not our original artwork. So you'll have to go here and move them here to make sure that, you know, uh, they kind of set in right. I think I'm happy with overall how this looks. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on done. Now this has been saved to swatches. You can find this in window and then swatches. Now let's go ahead and create a rectangle. Make sure it's white by moving to color here window and then color and choosing white and make sure the stroke is turned off over here. Now let, let's press command C or control C. 
command f or control f to paste on top so now we have two rectangles on top of each other and for this go to swatches and click on your pattern so now because our file was 5 into 5 inches the artwork is pretty big so now if i want to print it on a paper or something like that i'm going to go ahead and create a new file and i'm going to choose 12 into 12 inches because it's bigger than a4 so i'm sure that a4 size paper it'll cover the whole page and here i'm going to give it a cmyk and 300 ppi and then click on create so now I'm, we are going to go to rectangle tool again click and make a big square or circle or rectangle and make sure the stroke is turned off and go back to fill now go to your selection tool click go to swatches and you see that it's missing here so what you can do is go back to your file click on this rectangle that you created Control c or command c to copy come back here and paste and now you can see that it updates here you can also adjust this thing here to match the square and it automatically corrects everything and if you want you can also move this around to make sure that you know the kind of pattern that you want in the center of this page is also updated okay so once you all have all this ready you can go to file export and export as and you can save it as a png if you're saving it as png make sure you click on use artboard so that only the part which the artboard covers gets printed and now you can also print directly going to file and print and it automatically creates a really nice page with your pattern on it so if you want smaller pattern because if you think these all these individual elements are too big make sure you create these things in smaller sizes and then automatically you will have a much smaller pattern over here so yeah that's basically it how you create things in adobe fresco and then bring them over here and convert it into pattern look at those strokes they look so nice I hope you liked this tutorial and if you did give a thumbs up and hit subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.